My name is Nick, I started Nick's TV Repair about a decade ago, and since then I have fixed over 26,000 devices. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix this Sony power supply, which is triggering a 4-blink error code. For bench testing purposes, I'm going to plug in this custom cable, which is going to turn on the power supply. And now we can plug it into power and do some voltage checks. I'm going to use my chassis as ground, and I'm going to do a measurement on pin number 1, which is supposed to be about 3.5 volts, which is exactly what we're getting. Pins 2 and 3 are also supposed to get the same voltage, and that's what we get. And then the bottom couple of pins are supposed to be 12 volts, and that's also what we're getting. Next, I'm going to check the output voltage over here, which goes to our T-Con and panel. And I'm going to measure the very bottom pin, and we're supposed to be getting, I think, 24 volts here. And I just got a little spike of 1.5, 2 volts, and then it went back to 0. Oh, 1.2. Okay, so that is an issue. We are not getting the correct output voltage down here. Using my thermal camera on the power supply, I can see that there are a couple transistors on this heatsink that are getting hot. And that is actually where we commonly see failures, which is on these two transistors over here. We just heard a little bit of a squeaking sound and immediately the transistor got very hot. And I'm going to use my discharging tool to safely discharge the power board. And there is a lot of power. Okay, it's finally starting to fade. Okay, let's go to continuity mode. When I detect a short, I'll get a beep from the multimeter. Let's take a look at these two transistors. I'm going to put my negative lead to the middle pin and my other lead on the outside pins. Okay, and it looks like we're getting four, three, two ohms going down. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, it looks like the same reading. Let's check the other pin. And this one's reading 34 ohms on the top pin. So the top transistor over here looks like the bottom and center leg were shorted to one another, whereas the bottom transistor, both the top and bottom leg, were shorted to the middle pin. So most likely, my thoughts are the bottom transistor is at fault. The top one may not be at fault, but to be safe, we want to go ahead and replace both since they are in parallel. So we'll go ahead and unscrew the transistors from the heatsink. So these three joints over here and over here are the two transistors. Adding some solder first. Now some of these pads are very large and they are absorbing a lot of heat. So I'm going to have to go with several passes to fully desolder. Not quite. These are some of the tougher transistors we have to desolder. Typically the bottom left pin is easier to desolder than the rest just because it sits on a smaller pad, so it soaks up a little bit less heat. So usually if they give me too much trouble, I'm going to make sure that the bottom left pin is fully desoldered, and then I'm gonna pull the transistor through while melting the solder on the remaining two pins. Uh, all right, so the pins are actually not loose, but there's probably very little solder left, so we're gonna just finish it off with the desolder wick. All right, let's see. Nope. Okay, so this one's loose but this one still is soldered down, it seems like. And now this one is also loose, so I'm gonna start by adding some extra solder to the remaining two joints. And I'm actually gonna use an assist with the hot air. And this is just to help me get better flow by essentially preheating the whole board those large pads, and that should allow me to more easily pull this transistor through. Oh, and it looks like it's going through already. So I'll put the hot air away, and from the bottom using my needle nose pliers, I'm gonna grab that transistor and keep melting the pads with my iron from the top. And there we go. Now, while the board is still hot, I'm going to desolder it with the desolder wick. And it's typically a lot easier to desolder the joint when the transistor leg is not in the way anymore. And it looks like there's just a little bit more solder in there I'm not quite able to get. Just a little extra assist. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux. 
We're gonna go ahead and preheat it again with some more hot air. Okay, I'm seeing the solder go molten. Let's quickly switch over to the desolder wick. And we got it. Oh, but you know what? The joint above it actually looks like it somehow closed up. There we go, that's better. All right, let's go ahead and do the same with the other one. And I'm gonna assist it with the iron just to get it along to temperature a little faster. Oh, and it looks like it might have fallen through. So same thing. Let's put the hot air away. Grab the transistor with my needle nose and finish up the job with the iron. There we go. Again, while the board is hot, let's try to desolder and get rid of all that extra solder we added. And it looks like we got it all on the first try. Let's do a quick cleanup with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, getting rid of some of that extra flux. Let's do some checks with our multimeter. We are in resistance mode. And let's see, we no longer have the shorts we were seeing earlier. So I'm getting 280 and rising, 300 and still rising. All right, and for this one, mega ohms, 160, 190, 240 and rising, 280, 300 and still rising. So this does confirm the short is no longer present on the power supply board. So now let's check the transistors we removed. So this is our top transistor, which if you recall, only had one of the legs shorted to the center pin. And it looks like I'm getting five mega ohms and open on the other leg. So this one is good. And this one was our bottom one, which had both legs shorted to the center pin. And we're getting 37 ohms, which is a short or close enough to zero to be a short. And this one is pretty much a dead short at less than one ohm. Okay, so it looks like only one of our two transistors was defective and needed a replacement. But again, as I stated, we always wanna replace both because they are in parallel and there is always a risk that when one of them goes out, it starts to damage the other or that the other is simply near its end of life. Before we install our replacements, I'm going to clean off the original thermal paste and just a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol. So these transistors are labeled K3R2A10PL. And in order for them to fit, I'm gonna bend some of the pins. Now for these replacements, I am gonna upgrade the thermal paste to some MX-4 in the hopes that we will reduce a likelihood of a repeat failure. And then I'm gonna use the back of the transistors to spread the thermal paste around. All right, now we can go ahead and line them up. And it looks like I don't have quite the perfect bend on those pins. Didn't bend them quite enough. There we go. Let's screw them back in. All right. Now, before we begin our soldering, I'm going to cut off the extra leg length. We don't need. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux. I wanna make sure I have very good joints. Now I do already have some flux in the solder, but I wanna add a little extra just to be sure. Okay, and that should do it. Again, let's give it a quick clean. And now that we have our new transistors in, let's go ahead and do a final check. Okay, and that's much better. No short, no short, no short, 230, 250, 300. So that's correct, that's what we're expecting and then mega ohms on the other leg, 2.3 mega ohms. So it looks like our new transistors are now getting the appropriate readings. Those are the resistances that we are expecting on a good working board. So now we can go ahead and live test. So I'm gonna plug in my connector back in. We'll apply power and back in DC, negative lead to chassis ground. 
are we getting our three and a half volts? And are we still getting our 12 volts? We should, we are. And are we now getting our correct output voltage down here, bottom pin? And we're getting 21.3 volts. We were not getting that before. So this is good news. And to me, that is an indication that our power supply is fixed and now working. If you have a power supply you'd like to send in for us to fix, we offer flat rate services, which come with a one year warranty. Those are gonna be available on our website, which I will link in the description down below. Otherwise, if you found the content helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.